awesome. I have with me today, you guys, I am excited because we have with us Miss D. Bowden. She is the founder of BCS Solutions. And basically, it's a revenue recovery consulting firm that helps small companies recover lost revenue and their cash flow. Now, here's the thing. Businesses are in business to make money. And so it is, it's just going to, it's amazing because um, I'm a contract monitor. It's amazing how much money is lost due to fraud, financial waste, and lack of collections. People just don't collect their money. So I'm quite sure that you're going to get into that because this is where you thrive. But first, I want you to introduce who you are. Who is D. Bowden? Because I know. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you guys are in the world. First of all, Katina, Katrina, I'm sorry, Katina, thank you so much for this amazing chance to talk to you. So if, as I botched up your name, let me get it right. <laughs> Cortina. My Cortina. apologies. Let me get it correct. So, first of all, thank you again for this. Um, I am honored to be able to talk about, you know, BCS Solutions, me, recovery, cash flow, money. Because here's the thing. Most people are like, why is, why is she always talking about this, this thing? How secure is your cash flow? Well, here's why. Cash flow is the centerpiece of your business. If you're in business, you went in business to do one thing, make mm -hmm. money. Now, right. you either sell a product. You sell a service, but your goal is to make money. Otherwise, you'd be a nonprofit. <laughs> My understanding right. is you could go into business. They go into business to make money and to, and to do good. Most of us now have a, have a, have a um, philanthropic part to our business. We want to do, make money, but also do good. Yeah. So I want to help the people make money and do good by making sure that they get paid for their services. I don't want to see anybody else lose, lose, you know, lose their business because they're Invoices were there. Was, there was invoices were sent out, but the receivables were not collected. Right. So let me break that down. What that means is this: If you're in business and you sold a product or a service to another company, mm -hmm. through it with a contract that says, you know, I company A sell you company B these amount of widgets for this much money on this date, and then we expect to provide the widgets, get this paid, send you the invoice, and you pay us, and we're good. That's normally how it goes. Very right. easy, crazy, but in the world that we live in. You have people who don't feel like paying stuff. People <laughs> make data entry errors. People just don't, people got all kinds of issues and drama. And they forget to say, they forget that, you know, there's a legal responsibility. So when you sign the contract, you say you're going to do this business transaction with somebody else. You're actually obligated to do so. Hmm. Otherwise, they can take it to court. Then it gets really messy. And we're not trying to do all that. But right. here's the thing. My, my topic is always called how secure is your cash flow is because there are a lot of companies basically that do, that do great work, but they forget that the, 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 the sale is not complete until the money's in the bank. Mm. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. Sale is not complete until the money's in the bank. Because here's the thing. I really want you to do the absolute best you can with sell. Crush it in the sale market. Do the sell you. Do it well. But please make sure that after you complete the sale, that the money from the sale gets to your company's bank account. And here's right. why. I'll share that by sharing a story. About 10 plus years ago, I worked for a company called Amherst Technologies. They were a small IT firm up in Merrimack, New Hampshire. For y'all who don't know, I'm a native of Boston. So <laughs> I'm all things New Boston. England. So Patriots, <laughs> Boston, Red Sox, Celtics, all things New England. Don't hate us. We're, we're, we're we'll chance this year. <laughs> Put that out there for the record. We joined the Steelers. We're good. We, they got seven. We got six. Okay, I'm sorry. I digress. Back to my story. <laughs> <laughs> Amherst Technologies was a small IT firm back in Merrimack, New Hampshire. I got hired part-time to do collections. That's mm -hmm. what I do. They had $8 million. Please hear me. $8 million worth of sales that were done but not collected. Wow. So the, the, the people sold $8 million worth of IT product, services, software licenses, et cetera. Somewhere in between huh. the sale and some days, they never got the money collected. So I got hired to figure out how come $8 million was sitting on the books. Well, mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, I'm a believer in God. And so I don't usually start any major or minor project without talking to God. So I literally was like, God, look, I don't know how this hot got here, but I know you're going to give me a look to drop me one piece of knowledge so I can untangle this and help make this happen. And he did. And I'm thankful for that. So in 60 days, I got $6 million back. Gosh. 60 oh, days. 
part time. I work from four o'clock in the afternoon until eight. Wow. Six million dollars in 60 days. But that's not the, although that's a phenomenal part of my story, what happened was, even though I did that and I was part of a collections team, the president of the company decided that it wasn't enough and they decided to close. Huh. True story. If you Google Amherst Technology, Merrimack, New Hampshire right now, they don't exist. You go find their logo and that is it. Wow. Two months before Christmas, he came downstairs. He said, listen, I want to tell y'all thank you so much for your time and your service. But we are effectively closed as of this time. And you all got 30 minutes to go get your stuff. Whoa. And we basically wish you the best. Whoa. And so, seriously, true story. So two months before Christmas, me and I had worked really hard to get my $6 million. Huh. I'm devastated. Not only devastated, I'm pissed. Because yeah. I'm like, look, I, all this and I got a job. Are you kidding me? I was pissed. I'm trying to be polite. Right. I was mad. Right. I was mad. <laughs> I was mad. Yeah. But here's the thing. I realized during, from that lesson, that was the beginning of my journey for asking the question, how secure is your cash flow? Because of what happened. Mm-hmm. I'm working part time and I, I crush it and, and, and get $6 million back. I have other people that are still collecting, but together we didn't make enough of a debt in order to get, recover enough money, number one. Number two, the bigger question was and still is, what happened with the sales guys? The right. sales agent that nobody ever asked. How come this? How come you all have all these sales on the books, but the money right. for the sales never hit the book? So that's what started this the journey of BCS Solutions. It's because of what happened to me personally, mm. and it's for, it was a small company, and I I have a passion, a drive, a love for small businesses, and I want don't want to see another one, if I can help it, end up like that. Because here's the thing. I'm sure the people who created, who founded Amherst Technologies never expected to go out of business. No. I'm sure they expected they created this great product. They got, they're in the IT, crushing it. But guess what? If you Google them, Amherst Technologies, Merrimack, New Hampshire, they don't exist. Gosh. The logo comes up. I'm, I keep saying that Gosh. because you, know, you keep telling that same story. I'm not lying. Google them. They don't exist. The logo comes up. That's it. So my point of this, I digressed again. See, I'll stop digressing. But anyway, <laughs> let me get back on track. My point <laughs> is, is that what happened to them and to me personally mm-hmm. sparked a, a, a drive to have this conversation, to talk about how secure is your cash flow. Please, as a business owner, if you're listening to me, please listen. Please do a couple things have a list of your of your contracts whoever you are in business with please have a list of your contracts please know how much how, how much the contract is worth mm-hmm. you have invoices that are scheduled to go out either every 30 days 60 days 90 days however you've written your contract you should have a list of all your contracts you shouldn't have a list of all of your invoices you should know the date that they were mailed out and you should know the date the money's coming in and you also should know who was the sales rep if you have a sales rep on your team who worked to get that contract for your company and build the relationship. The reason why is this collections. When most people think about it, they would rather scratch their fingernails on a, on a chalkboard, Mm -hmm. go get a root canal. Yeah. We go have to go ask somebody. It's true. Yeah. They don't want to ask you for no money. Cause here's the thing. Most of, I mean, think about it. If, if, even if you, even on a personal tip, if you loan somebody some money, all of us have had that friend. They, we need, they needed to borrow some money. Yes. And you're like, girl, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get it, get, I'm gonna get it back to you. I'm gonna get it back to you. And you notice after a couple of weeks, you're like, this person ain't still like. They, then mm-hmm. they start avoiding you because they don't want. They, when they don't have the money, but then they're embarrassed. But they're not grown enough to tell you, look here, I'm running short, but I'm gonna yeah. keep my word and still pay you. Well, if they, the same thing happens in business. Sometimes things things don't go well, but there's a thing called payment plans. <laughs> yeah. So let me tell you another. At least story. that. <laughs> let me tell you another story. So I had another another customer that had a paint job. $750. I don't know what they painted. It must have been a small room. But anyway, yeah. the person went in, they, they painted, they painted. And the person needed some time to pay their bill. The paint person went, look, I want my $750. they are like, look, I don't have it all. Mm. I said, well, so they were like, going to take them to collections. I'm like, we can work this out. It's real simple. Yeah. Why don't we get them on the phone? When did you tell them the money was due? I said, well, if they're like most of us, most of us don't have $750 to $1,000. We can just swipe. Right. Credit card. You got that right away. Most of us got to save up for a little bit or do a payment plan. So right. I suggested let's do a payment plan. Let's do, you know, most people get paid, you know, the 15th, the last day of the month. Let's do a little bit there and do it over a couple of months. And guess what? It worked it out. And you don't ruin the relationship. Exactly. I think the reason most people don't want to deal with collectors because number one, 
they're afraid of messing up the relationship, yeah. but they're also not understanding that collections is an extension of customer service. Hmm. Oh, and that's a hard piece for a lot of people. Yeah, the, no one wants the confrontation, even though it's, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's your money. But, you know, I'm glad you gave that scenario because even, like you said, even when you loan money to people, they don't pay it back. A lot of times we just don't want the confrontation and we just kind of, you know, we chalk it up and, and, and you know, we, we deal with it and, and move on. But in businesses, this hurts your business. You know, there's, there's one thing in relationships with, you know, just you personally, but business becomes business and but you business is relationships. This is true. Wow. You're right. Business is relationships. And if you're a small business and you have to write off something. So let's say you had a, a sale for a thousand dollars and, you know, you've been back and forth and back and forth. Y'all been doing this, doing this ping pong thing. And you're like, oh, I need my money. At some point, you do have to make a, a business decision that, okay, mm. I, I have to, I'm going to write off or lose this $1,000 because the stress of trying to get this money from you. So it's like me, I done called you 15 times. I done yeah. sent the letters. I done threatened to take you to court, et cetera, et cetera. So I, you know, all that stuff. And all, that's all the things that when people think about collections, right. it, it stresses them out. And so I am, try, I am working really hard to change the narrative around it and see it that, number one, that the sale is not complete until the money's in the bank. Number two, you are definitely, you are owed your money, the, your O-W-E-D, and I want to make sure you get your old money, O-L-D money. And the mm -hmm. point is that I want you to have what's owed to you is as important as what as is as important as the old money that's been out there for 60 days or 90 days and more importantly if you can focus on getting your money back then you can if you can focus on getting your money back then you can focus on going after getting new business instead right. of stressing about can you meet payroll you know are mm. the people that Let's say you have a small, let's say you have a small, a small company, you've got employees. If you're stressed about your cash flow, that means you're stressed about making payroll, you're making taxes. If you're leasing a space, you got to pay the rent. And then the people that work for you, look here, they, they have a dog, cat, squirrel, whatever it makes up their family. Mm -hmm. They're counting on getting their check just right. like you. <laughs> and if they're not, they not sure they're getting their check, y'all know how people are with their money. Look here, the 15, oh. like, look here, boss, look here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not trying to feel all that. You need to make sure I get my money. You know, you know how I'm just, Oh I'm yeah, joking. it's the truth. But we get like that. We get like yeah. that. When you mess up people's money, it's crazy. And it's, it's, and that's the thing. Money, money is, is energy, but it's also a representation of your work. Yes. And your worth and your worth getting your money for the product or service that you sold. Yes. You're worth it. Wow. And that's, that's, it's true. You're worth it. So I hope you all hear me, but seriously, you are worth it. If you put together and offer a good service or a good product in good faith, and you did it according to the terms of the contract, which I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. you should get paid and you shouldn't have to haggle about it. And I get it. Most people do not want to haggle with anybody. People get ashamed. They yeah. get embarrassed. And what I'm trying to, where I'm working on is having a conversation to say, listen, you don't need to, if people owe you money, you don't need to be ashamed about it. It happens. I mean, if you think yeah. about it, it's like most of us have had a, had a bad date. You're like, man, you met this person. You're like, chow. They were beautiful, <laughs> fine, whatever. They looked great. And then you're like, a couple of months in, you're like, mm -mm. Nah. something about this, baby yeah. girl. Mm -mm, nope. And you just have this gut feeling. That <laughs> yeah. It's just gone <laughs> awry. Well, if you, if you're in business, you kind of know, sometimes, you know, you might get this really quick deal and you're like, you jumped in and then you're like, you didn't do all the due diligence to make sure everything was straight. Now you wonder how come you stuck, you short with your money. Well, kind of a bad date. Same thing. Right. <laughs> you're like, right. so, and it's hard, but think it, what's hard is to acknowledge that you made those mistakes, but guess what? Yes. Life is about making the mistakes, learning the lessons and then going forward and doing better next time. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm having a conversation today about how secure is your cash flow and using the stories and, and humor for people to get it that I understand that this is not the easiest thing to do in business. It's, yeah. it's great to do your, do your proposal, do your presentation, dog and pony show, all that. Right. But when you got to come back and ask for the money, you have to be as passionate about asking for the money as you were for asking for the sale. Yeah. And you know, the thing is too, some businesses, they just, and here's, here's where maybe you can chime in too. Some of them, it's not about the collections because if they knew about it, they would probably go after their money. But where do businesses lose sight of this sometimes? Do you think they have too many irons in the fire in different mm -hmm different areas and they just lose sight of this 
Sure. How but do think they about get it. so far away from their it's, own? It's easy. It, it, yeah. It's like this. If you're, if you're a business that's got, that has so many projects, let's say you have one of those big white boards and you have, you know, so many, so many projects for, this is March. So you got March, April, May, mm. June, July. And let's say that there are bonuses tied to getting all the those contracts. Uh-huh. Ain't nobody thinking about collecting no money right now. They look here. Well, we late. Right. Boss said we need to make this many sales for March, April, May, June, July, and that equals a huge bonus. Well, you know, right. spring and summer's coming. I don't know about you, but most people are going to be out on the water, get make do the first white all white party, yep. right. whatever. <laughs> and anybody anybody trying to un- untangle old stuff but here's the thing if you're not if you're not a good steward of your accounts you will go from zero to 30 31 to 60 61 mm. to 90 and beyond really quickly because yeah. you keep pacing the, the next project but you're not circling back to make sure that those other those previous sales were actually made and i said now again yeah. the sale is not complete until the money is in the bank yeah. like i said i want people to understand i want you to do it and crush the sales i want you to do really well but as an as a, as a ethical salesperson, you should make sure that, yes, make that sale for the company, but make sure you build that relationship with that AR person so they know, listen, I made this sale, here's the information, and listen, if the money for this sale has not come in by this date, ping me, Let's us, let us work together. Right, As a person, right. everybody being silo, I'm just sales, I'm just AP, I'm just AR, I'm yeah. just contracts. Nobody's actually talking to one another. Everybody's just doing their own thing. But that's how com- companies are losing money because so yeah. I'm, a- I'm afraid to go talk to you. I'm in sales. I'm afraid to talk to you because if you find out how much I made in my commission, don't nobody care about your commission. Right. We want to make sure the company stays in business yes. so we all can have jobs so we can actually do our life. That's yeah. what we care about. Make your commission. That's fine. Yeah. But, make, but it's, it's bigger than a commission. It's, bigger, it's, it's a more about your moral responsibility to, to, your, to your fellow coworkers, your teammates, mm-hmm. that they – also can can live well because everybody lives well at different levels yes but if you live if so if you if you do well on your sale and you make a lot and you get your commission great but you also should should have a concern that the company does well but also your teammates do well because yeah. when you all do well together guess what that opens up more opportunities and, and usually the companies that that do well they don't have a prop they don't have any issue with sharing because yeah. they, they recognize that if we do good then you do then good, you do good. You yeah. do better and you'll work harder and it becomes this this thing if you look at the companies that are that are, have t- changed their changed their the trajectory of how they do business a lot of it is you know based on work-life balance mm. they're looking at family they're doing all these things to make it so you want to be a part of this because it isn't isn't just about chasing your almighty dollar it's about how can you make a how can you how can you you know make money and do good mm-hmm. you can exactly. make your money and do good Gosh. But don't forget to collect it too. <laughs> oh, As I say, see what I love about you is you're so you're so easy to talk to, and you're so you know your approach. Um, I think uh, you know. Of course, they say you you catch more bees with honey, or catch more flies with honey, whatever they say. Mm-hmm. But some businesses become ashamed. They've gotten they they've lost a lot of money, and then you come in and you're able to do these collections, you know, and, 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 and look at this revenue that's gone out and kind of pull these businesses back in and back together. How do, you know, when, when people are looking to, um, uh, to have you to look into their resources, what do you go in and do? What, what do you do that will help them? And, and, and listen to me, businesses, <laughs> when it comes to collecting your money, you know, sometimes it can, it seems like it's out of control and, and, and people are looking at your contracts and, and wow, you've lost a lot of money, but this is so important. And this is where you come in, which this is where you just, you're just dynamic. You are <laughs> dynamic. Tell them what you, tell them of so, your magic. <laughs> so I can't give away all the magic. They got to pay me for it. So right. Gonna, they pay. But what, what we, what I can do, what I can imme- immediately offer is this. If, if you're listening to, to this, this um, conversation tonight or today or tomorrow um, and you've got issues with your collections, you can do a couple of things. One, you can schedule an appointment with, 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 B, with BCS Solutions on my site, which is www.bcsconsultinggrp.com. That's www.bcsconsultinggrp.com. On my site, you can actually schedule a, a, what's called a quick audit. And an audit will just basically do a quick, re, a quick review of up, up to three accounts. 
and I'm only ask I, there are five questions I need you to answer so we can figure out the basic synopsis of your of your accounts and then obviously it's going to get into more and more questions but the fast first thing you quickest thing you can do is schedule an, an, an audit and then there's also even before we get to the audit you can actually schedule a, a free 30 minute talk with me and we can talk about your accounts we can talk about how much money is owed do you want to go after it or not hmm. and if you do you want you want BCS Solutions to come in and work with you, or do you want us to train, or do you want us to kind of do an analysis, tell you what's wrong, and then give you back your baby and tell you, here you go, have, have at it, have a good time. <laughs> but the services are available to either to, to do an audit, basically, which is basically a, a quick review of your account. There's more to it, but just for the sake of time, yeah. it's basically a quick review of what's going on. And then there's a free call that you can have. And oh, before I forget, because I know we're going to go into more stuff, but one more yeah. thing for your listening audiences. So... Even if you don't even want to do work with me, I do have a free gift. It's called Five Successful Strategies to Collect Your Money. It's called Five Successful Strategies to Collect Your Money. You can get it at www.bcsconsultinggrp.com. That's www.bcsconsultinggrp.com. In the middle of the page, put your name and your email. Click the, the button, and then the, the download is right there. And it's, it's, my, it's my personal philosophy on how you success, how you successfully collect your money wow. which is one you set a goal two you write it down three you affirm it four you believe it and then five you celebrate i personally believe in celebrating i don't yes. care whether you collect a dollar or <laughs> millions of dollars it's the same process that's right Rate the glass of whatever your favorite beverage is it, it might be deer park sparkling water or it might be something else a little more fruity and tasty but whatever you do raise the glass <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Raise a glass. That is wonderful. <laughs> now, when you uh, when you are doing this, do you find that there's a lot of fraud within? I know a lot of businesses may be, um, you know, we talk about collections and, and you know making the sales, but it is is that a part of um, a part of this? I know you know with contracts. I find a lot of fraud from within, and and businesses are losing money because some of their own employees, you know, are not, are either uh, collecting for themselves or not, you know, th there's some things that go on. Is this well, a, a major there, concern? There are, you see? there are definitely things that go on. I, I personally have not encountered fraud. What I encounter more are more of is errors. Mm, wow. and, and because, and because of, of my background, I'm always looking at how was the contract set up? How was the information entered into the system? Data entry errors cost wow. companies millions of dollars because people forget to go double check stuff. It's the simplest yes. thing. You oh, know, something, something could look like a Z. It might be an N, but how the person writes it, they Z looks like an N. You're like, what is that? It was a Z. No, that was an N. Really? Whatever. And the point is, data entry errors are, are done. That's the first thing. Secondly, um, there, are, there have to be checks and balances. The reason I kept talking about those four areas of sales accounts payable, accounts receivable, and contracts. The contracts person basically is responsible for making sure that the contract was executed correctly mm -hmm. and that it was set up correctly in the system, that you know who, who, who you're, who you're in, in business with, who you send your invoices to, what was the product or service that they bought, and when you're supposed to get paid. If the contracts person is, is on, their, on, their, on, their, on their job doing well, they're going to be monitoring what's going on. Yeah. And then they will notice, okay, if, hey, we're supposed to have gotten these services or this product and this didn't come in by this day, first, first, first flag. Secondly, mm -hmm. salesperson, they do the presentation. If they did it correctly, it should have some, 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 some data points that are on it to talk about what they sold, how much they sold, yeah. and when it's going to be delivered, et cetera. And they, they will be bringing that signed contract back to the office. Or, oh, now I know we do a lot of things electronically. I'm old school, so you bring yeah. back the hard copy. But I know y'all can take a picture of it and upload it, and it's still in there. But the point is that all of those things need to be checked. And, and here's the thing is a lot of people think that because we live in this, this amazing technology world that, that the basics still don't need to be done mm. there's still something to be said you talked earlier about audits mm -hmm. an audit doesn't mean you're in trouble an audit means you're checking that the information that was stated there is exactly the way it was supposed to be yes. and if it's not then you correct it you correct it on the front end before it becomes a bigger issue and then it becomes all over the news you get written up yeah, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And because you and I both come from the, come from the government space, we know what it's like to get audited. And oh, we know yes. What it's like to give, have your files checked. 
And there's nothing worse than, than the, you know, an officer coming in and they say, okay, I want contract number, blah, blah, blah. And I need all the files. And uh, you're like, oh, crap. Because uh, you yeah. didn't realize, oh, I, don't, I don't have all my stuff together. We'll see. Yeah. There you go. Yes. That's why I was saying earlier how important it is to make sure as a business owner, you have things in order. You should have a file, whether it's a hard copy file or electronic file of all of your contracts. You ought to know the number the name of your person you're doing business with, how much it's for, et cetera, all your invoices, what you're going to mm -hmm. be billed, paid, date, sales rep, all those things. Now, are, are there opportunities for fraud? Of course there are. There's mm -hmm. opportunities for fraud in everything. In anything, yeah. In anything. And I'm, not, and I'm not trying to paint this, this you know, the super, you know, pink bubble situation that it never happens. I just, I just have never had it happen to me. I end up having to untangle the messes. So if there was fraud in the mess, Mm. I imagine it would probably rise up at some point because at point, some point something's not going to make sense. Right. And I think that's the other thing too is a lot of people don't ask questions. They mm. just take it at face value and they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't go back and dig. As you know, we were, as we were talking before we got on the, gone on here, I was telling yeah. about some stories that happened and it was like, nobody asked a question. I'm like, what? Why? Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's it's amazing how that happens. You know, every, how, every day, something simple, you know, but, but that's the thing. And see, I think, and that's the, th that's the thing. So if we're, if we're talking real talk for a minute, I think that's the piece that, that, that gets lost in our, our super fast, super paced, you know, 144 characters society. Yes. I don't know how most people do real business with 144 characters. I can't type that fast. <laughs> Right, right. I just can't. I'm like, look here. I need to talk to you face to face. Oh, I yeah. Need to see face. I need to have see some facial expressions. I need to see if you laugh. I need to see if you, you know you light, lighten up a little bit. You know, you might be cool as anything on the phone, but look here. Yeah, I sure. Right. Talk because old old school. We relationships are built over being able to see you. Right. Get a sense of who you are. You remember how when we were a kid, your mother used to tell you, "I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is about the kid, but I don't like them." Remember? Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> your mother, your mother could, there was this sense that they had about that kid. You're like, mm -mm. and you, of course, you were like, mom. And then, not right. You're like, look here, what did I tell you? I yep. told you I don't like that kid and I don't want you hanging out with him. Well, guess what? Yes. Your mom's intuition had a sense about that kid. She didn't know what it was, but something, but there was something that popped up. That yeah. Didn't, because she saw that kid. She yes. couldn't take your work because you were a kid. You were just looking at the kid. Oh, yeah, well, they fun. They, the, the cool kids are always the ones that got us in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> the cool kids. And mom yeah. was always right. That, right? That's, that's oh, the my thing. God. The, cool kids, the cool kids always got us in trouble. But if you listen to your parents, there were certain things they just told you. And the point I'm sharing about this is I'm saying this to say, in, 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 in as much as we've gotten away from from basic values and basic yeah. business sense or common sense. Don't get me wrong. I love the technology. Yeah. I love the 144 characters. You know, pick your sure. pick social media, all that. But at the end of the day, you still have to have a conversation with another human being. The success I have had in collecting money is mm -hmm. because I get on the phone and I talk. I start off sending off an email, introducing myself. Like, Hi, I'm D with BCS Solutions or whatever I'm doing all that but guess what eventually i have to get on the phone and say hi right. how are you i'm d got can, you got five minutes to talk to me about this usually they do mm -hmm. and here's the other thing one of the other things that, that my, one of my successes is showing gratitude yes. if you remember when i first started oh. this conversation yes. the first thing i said was thank you for this opportunity to be here you know why because gratitude changes everything the people that i work with i work with people all over the country I don't usually meet any of them. I don't even get to do a Zoom call with them or anything live yeah. on the phone or an email. But guess what? I respect the fact that they have a job to do just like I do. Mm -hmm. And it's the courtesy and showing gratitude for them taking my call and them helping me figure out my problem. And I can go back to them now and say, hey, most of the time when I, if they hear me talking, they think, who are you talking to? My, my, my person, we get, we get some money. Listen, when the check is in the bank, you'd be like, Oh, that, that's what's up. Go on, do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Cause the money, <laughs> the money's here, but it's building relationships. And I've it's learned true. that I learned it the hard way because you know, as a, you know, when I was younger in collections, yeah, I mean, I was hardcore. Yeah, let's get it. And I'm like, mm, that wasn't working. So no, it doesn't. I figured out, I figured out that you needed to one respect the other person, the other person on the other end of the line. Number two, I'm working for a company that needs the money. But mm -hmm. if I'm not being respectful toward you, why would you go help me? Right. I wouldn't. Right. I, exactly. you stuck, you, look, you stuck like Chuck. Hey. 
<laughs> Why would I help? Listen, you, right, you have no reason to, to keep that conversation going. It's yeah. no different. If really, if you think about it, we're, we're talking about the basics of, of, you know, common sense. It's no different when you call up a particular company mm-hmm. and you, know, you get the person on the phone and you say hi and da, 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 da. And you call about account, da, da, da. And, and, you know, after a while, you know, you might, your voice elevates a little bit. And that person like, can I put you on hold for a minute? Mm-hmm. You realize when they put you on hold, it's like, oh, no, sorry, right? You just come to town, tell you. They, That's they, me. They hold. Right. You ain't, whatever you needed, you're on hold. And you might be on hold for a long time. Oh, you yeah. Because you, you were not Yes. Dirty. Yes. I get that you get uh, uh, upset. Don't get, don't get me wrong. I have moments when I get irritated. I trust yeah. me, I do. But I've learned that if, if I'm not... If I still don't show respect and courtesy, even when I'm irritated, mm-hmm. I, you know, they're not going to help me. And I've, I've, been do- I've been at this for 20 years. So I, I have learned how to yeah. manage my irritations. I've yeah. learned <laughs> how to use humor. I, like we're talking now, uh, this is how yes. I do business. I have my pe- Most people, when I do business with them, we are laughing and joking. They're like, you are funny. Yeah. Because I have, I, look, I got, listen, I have a problem to get solved. I got to get money. Yeah. Money is not the easiest thing for people to talk about or engage with. So I, I had to find a way to smooth this in mm-hmm. and get them to work with me. It's kind of like if you're if any of y'all are parents, y'all got these kids, you got to make them take this medicine. <laughs> and they don't take it the first way, what y'all put in? You put mm-hmm. the spinach uh, with some peanut butter or some ice cream. You just scoot <laughs> it over, make it, but you're still feeding, you're still getting it. still, getting still it taking in. the still medicine. The right. I have to get, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to the spinach which is yes. get my money, but I got to smooth it over and crack jokes and right. relax them and hey, make them say, okay, I will help you in and do all that. But guess yeah. what? That's been, that's been the blessing and, and also showing gratitude has been one of, one of several things that God has blessed me to do successfully. Yes. And it works. Oh, so. that's why I just adore you because that's exactly the way I do. And even when I want something, even I'm, when I'm not the collector, I'm the one on the, uh, the other end. I, when I, I noticed, you know, too, when I'm nice, when I show gratitude, oh, people go all out the way. Well, ma'am, we can give you a little more time on that. You know, it, it just, it means something. And I think our society is so busy, just so, everybody's so irritated and frustrated. We lose sight of that quickly and businesses, you know, uh, even trying to, to touch on a subject as such as money, which is money is touchy. That's a touchy subject. And so the way that you deal with that, your rapport, your finesse, your godliness, oh my gosh, it just makes you the perfect person for this. And you've been very successful and you've been very blessed because of your rapport that you build with people. I just... When I heard you talk before, I was just like, I just adore her. I just Aww. adore her because I know Thank the you. way that you do things, just a positive experience. And yeah, people will go all out the way. It's so sad how we've lost that. How have we've lost that common courtesy. People just don't have it anymore. Thank you for saying that. And thank you for the compliment. I definitely appreciate it. But I, and I think, I think that's why when I started, somebody asked me, I might've been on our, our previous show with you and yeah. Shay, but we were talking about this and I was like, okay, looking at kind of, and people ask me all the time. So what's your secret sauce? Hmm. My God, that's the first, that's my secret sauce. <laughs> so that's it's it. him. Yeah. He's my secret sauce. <laughs> but on top of that, you know, I've learned, like I said earlier, I've been doing this for 20 years. And yeah. when I was young, yeah, you know, I made some mistakes and, and did some stuff totally crazy. And you know, the, the Bible talks about, you know, in all you're getting, get understanding, get mm. wisdom and get understanding. Mm-hmm. It talks about get wisdom and understanding. And so I think there's another scripture, if I, I don't remember it verbatim, but it, you know, it says, um, train up the child in the way it should go. And when it gets old, it won't depart from it. Yeah. Well, if you, if your parents taught you some, some of the basic things, please, thank mm-hmm. you, excuse me, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Can I fix this? Some of those basic things. Well, as I said earlier, we do business with people. Business, business is people. It's relationships. Yeah. You know how yeah. there's some people you just like, you just gravitate to because there's something about their spirit. You're like, ah. Oh. And some yeah. other people you're like, baby girl, oh. this one don't hear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, it's, it's like that. But here's the thing. 
there's it's it's a spiritual thing because that that spirit that clicks with that works with you you're more than ha more more like more than likely willing to go out your way for them because it's something you sense about them mm -hmm. you sense that they actually appreciate who you are and what you do yeah and because i'm in collections and recovering money i know a lot of people think that's a low job totem pole blah 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 but here's the thing hmm. if you like i said like i've said all night you can sell all day and crush it. Your sale is not complete so that money's in the bank. The mm -hmm. person that's in collections has to make sure that money is in the bank. So in my eyes, that person is due that respect because they have to go, especially if there's a mess with the mm. sale, Yeah, they have to untangle it because usually the salesperson like, I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'll look, I sold it. That's it, all I got. That's it, right. And, and, oh, you need, wait a minute, you need something? Mm. Um, I was on a girl was on a napkin. Um, <laughs> oh, that's the truth. You're so right. <laughs> it was on a napkin, and it was a Friday night, and we had, you know, you know, we had a couple of whatever, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You're like, well, it oh, happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you want me to do you? And wait, don't the famous like you want me to do something? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Next something. Wow. <laughs> you want me to do so? Oh, yeah. I did. I sold. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm. So the point is, all of that, as we're talking about, even though it's, it's been going a little, little, little yeah. crazy, but it's all like fun. We're talking about the basics of, of you know, how secure is your cash flow? Your, your cash flow is secure because, A, you know the state of your flocks. You know your mm -hmm. contracts, your, so your sales, AP, AR contracts. Number two, you're keeping track of what's important in your accounts. You know your contracts, your invoices, amount, amount billed, amount due, payment, sales rep. Number three. Courtesy, respect. Collections is an extension of customer service. Mm. Collections yeah. is problem solving. When your money is past 60 days, it's a problem. It's got to be solved. You either have to send out an email. You got to mm. get on the phone. You need to build a relationship. You need to figure out what happened. And then you need to be willing to go the extra mile. What, right. what makes me and BCS Solutions different is we go the extra mile. Hmm. I go the extra mile. Yes. And, I don't, and I, I don't have any problem going the extra mile because I understand that I'm on a mission to get that money for myself mm -hmm. or my customer or my client. But that's my goal is to, get the, is, is to accomplish the mission and get the money. Yeah. Now, you know, are there times when it's challenging? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If this was easy, everybody would be doing it. Exactly. But they don't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. They don't. It's but hard. Yeah. It's hard because he, because having to go back and untangle somebody else's mess, who wants to do that? Oh, it's hard. Yeah. Raise your hand if you do. Anybody oh, raise why? your hand because I don't want to do that. No. <laughs> they don't. But that's the thing. But I, I'm on a mission to do that. And and the, the whole crux of this conversation was to talk about um if you're if you're a small business or medium sized business, it doesn't matter. Your accounts matter, mm -hmm. your cash flow matters. If you're old money, you are worth getting it back. And if you have to make a decision to do what's called a bad debt write-off, you have to decide how much the money, how much, how much is this, this chasing this money worth for you to either write it off, number one, or number two, decide to go collect it. Mm. Only you can make that decision. Yeah. And if, if it's causing you that much stress and you're not sleeping and, and you got all this other drama, mm -mm. Yeah. now I would yeah. be like, nope. But again, that's a that's a business decision. I'm not advising everybody to go go to school. Yeah, D said write it off. No, I didn't. I said it yeah. depends <laughs> on what it means to you. Yes. Well, my point is that nobody nobody wants to lose any money in their in their business. No one ever no. says, "Oh, I went, I got this sale, man. I I wanted to lose that." No, but you have to you you in business you have to make hard choices. You have to make decisions mm. for the for the betterment of the business. If you all heard the beginning of my story, I shared. I worked for a company called Amherst Technology. They had $8 million in sales that they gave me to collect. I got $6 million done in 60 days, but they still went on to business. Mm. Oh, yes. For Christmas. That's what drives me to do all that I do to have every conversation about how secure is your cash flow. Collections is, a part of co collections is an extension of customer service. The sale is not complete until the money's in the bank. You are old money, O-W-E-D, for the old money, O-L-D. And I want to mm. make sure you can still go get your new business because you're worth it. Wow. Wow. This is all about.
Gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're so profound. I just love it. I just love it. You know, when you're not collecting millions of dollars every day, because you do it, you do. do it. Literally, you collect millions of dollars within a week just to, oh my gosh, your stories. This past week, this past week was $775,000 untangled in one week. In one week. One week. Wow. I know. <laughs> But listen, I, as I said, as I, you hear that, and I've been, I've been hearing this, people say, oh my gosh, you, you know, I, I may feel like I, you may feel like you can't come talk to me, but that's not true. Mm-hmm. Whether it's 775, it might be $750. Right. It doesn't matter. It's your money. You worked for it. You sold your product or service and you should get paid for your product or service. Yes. Don't forget that. Just want to oh. say that. BCS solution. Oh. Yes. Oh. Okay. That's us. <laughs> now, you know what? You have been busy because when you're not doing that, when you're not doing that, you're co-authoring books and whatnot, and you're doing conferences and whatnot. Yeah. Tell so let, us. let me Tell talk us about, about this stuff. About, yeah. About that. So, uh, well, let me see. Since 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 our last conversation, um, I've been been quite busy. I've been on six. Let's see. I've done three podcasts, God. three radio interviews. Um, I am part of a, a book anthology called Entrepreneurial Elevation. Um, the, the visionary for this is a, is a, a woman named Cheryl Wood. Mm-hmm. So I'm one of 30 authors that's actually going to be, that is, going, that is a part of this. It's called Entrepreneurial Elevation. The book actually comes out July 2019, and my chapter is called How Secure Is Your Cash Flow? Nice. And so there are 30 people that are coming together to tell 30 different lessons that entrepreneurs need to know when you start your business or even when you're in business, things that you need to, to get to the next level. I talk about how secure is your cash flow because obviously mm-hmm. I said all the time, you go in business to make money. So I'm, I'm going to, I talk about those, those things about, you know, sales and AP and AR and contracts and knowing, knowing the state of your flocks and you know, what you do if you're running issues. Issue, issue. So, yeah. but, so that's, that's an opportunity that's been, that's really cool. So I'm very excited about that. That's dropped the book drops. Uh, July, so there'll be a big book release. I'm a, I'm gonna need all my all my Facebook friends and, and Instagram friends. I'm gonna need y'all to buy that book because I we we want to be yes. like crush it Amazon number one. So that's one. Number two, um, I've been blessed with the opportunity to share the stage with the Jewel Tankard from wow. Bravo's uh, Thicker Than Water. Wow. She's having a millionaires conference actually April sixth in Detroit, Michigan, and so she has several keynote speakers. And then there's a section for those of us that are not that are not speaking live, we're actually what's called digital facilitators, which means that we we have our, a video that's pre-recorded that will be released and shown that day worldwide. Awesome. And truly is one of the ones doing how secure is your cash flow. <laughs> kind of cool opportunities that God is uh, God has opened up. And oh, oh uh, there's one more. Um, this will be a great one. Um, yeah. Effective tomorrow, I will be part of the Black Women Trainers Bureau. Huh. And I'm going to be teaching a class virtually um, for about six months on how security is your, is your oh cash flow. Actually, I was not selected to do that yesterday. Oh my gosh! Oh, you know what? I'm going to be following that because I want to know. Even though you know, I'm not. I'm a small one man band, so I'm a one man business or one woman. But it's so important, and just having those principles that you that you speak on. It's not you know, not just for businesses, but just it's for anyone. Life. Yes. Life. Oh my gosh. Oh, you do so much. I'm just so super proud of the things that you do Thank and, you. and, and, and the help that you provide that you've taken on this. Like we were saying, this is not easy. I, I do contract mon- management and I have to pour through files and look carefully at, at these contracts. It is not easy. And so you know, just having, you know, having someone on board that, that looks at this and is an expert at this, just wonderful, just a wonderful, your, your firm is just absolutely outstanding. Thank you. And, and I, I highly, highly recommend you for anything. I know I'll be following my, I'll be patterning my life after, you know, the things and the principles that you teach. I, I, I think it's wonderful. Yes. 
Wow, that's a that's quite yes. a compliment. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm glad that it's making a difference. And that's that's what that's what it's all about. I mean, at some point, I think you have to wake up and decide what do you what are you about? What are you doing? Yeah. Why are you here? You know, yeah. Yeah. you know, when we were little kids, you got to ask, so what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, I don't know. You couldn't come up with I don't know because that wasn't a good right. answer. You had to figure out something. Make up something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Something. Yeah. I don't know if not an answer. That, you don't know. What? You know, child. And that's where we come from. Like, mm -mm. try yeah. again. You can get your meant to rethink that one. You might want to come up with some pound two. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> but I, you know, it's, it's, I think it's been a, you know, it's been an evolution to figure out, you know, what is it that you really yeah. you know, want to do? Wow. Um, I didn't, I didn't necessarily choose collections or receivables management or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I wondered that. How did you what get I, into this? What did you want to do in life? What did you when want? I, well, I, it was funny. I think when I was 17, I don't know. I think I thought I wanted to be like a child psychologist. And then I, I got to my, did my freshman, I think my first semester in college, I was like, I don't like biology. I don't like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't want to deal with no crazy people. No, right. I, that, ain't, that, ain't for me. That, that ain't working. I'm like, mm -hmm, we figure out something else. And so <sighs> I've, but I've always loved, it's funny, even though I'm not really big on puzzles and my mm -hmm. logo is a puzzle piece, I've always big, been big on problem solving. Huh. And I've found that you know, once, once I got in, introduced to contracts, I was like, mm -hmm. this is fascinating. And so how I got into contracts was this. Um, I was a data entry. I was a, yeah, I was a temporary data entry person for uh, eight hours, eight, eight hours a day, five days a week for five weeks. So hmm. I had these stacks of invoices back in the day. I used to sit in data entries. That's why I'm so about data entry. <laughs> yeah. That's how come I know. Because I know one keystroke can jack up millions of dollars yes. and I don't had to untangle it so I already know so I did that and I worked for an engineering consulting firm and mm -hmm. then I got hired to be an accounts payable clerk and so they had all these invoices that they were billing for these services so this engineering consulting firm provided you know wastewater treatment and water treatment and construction and all this other stuff yeah. and they had all these invoices that had to all the expenses had to be billed against the contracts so I started learning all the pieces. That's okay. So you enter the information, it gets into these contracts. I'm like, cool. And then I met my first contract administrator. I thought he was the coolest man ever. I'm wow. like, what do you do? He said, oh, I'm a contract administrator. I'm like, what's that? Uh. He says, oh, I'm the person that administers the contract. So after, so after the sales presentation is done and the contract is won, somebody has to basically monitor what happened. So when they bought whatever they bought, we have to make sure that we, 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 they perform the service, we bill for the service, we collect for the service, and we fix any problems. I said, ooh. And then he said, then he said this, this was the thing that did it for me. <laughs> he said, do you know every business has a contracts person? I don't care what you do. Every business has somebody that is a huh. contract person who's making sure of product or service. Think about it. What, you're, if you're listening wow. to me right now, you got a cell phone. You got a contract with who? AT and T, right? T Mobile, or who? Yeah. Brand. You got a contract, and they guess what do they do every month? They bill you for they for their product and their service, yes. don't they? Yes. And you, you pay it, don't you? And otherwise, somebody's got to come back and ask you, "Hey, you get that little reminder? That's bills right. Do, bills do, and boom! Eventually, they'll just shut your service off. <laughs> you don't get right, your bill right. Is, but those four things happen. A sale was taking place. A sale took place. They sold you the, the newest phone and the services. You get so much, was it uh, 4GB or um, whatever it is. Yeah. All that, and then you get the insurance and the this and the that and whatever. That happened. Then you get a bill. Here you go. It's a perfect example of what I do. Yeah. So you get an invoice for your product or service, and you get your whatever your plan is. You get so many minutes and so much data and whatever, whatever, and you pay it. And then there's a contract, sales, AP, AR contracts. The same thing I've been talking all night. Yeah. There you go. That's oh, it. That lays it out perfectly. Yeah, it. that lays it out perfectly. That's, it happens every month. You get your bill. Same thing with, same thing with cable. Whoever you live in the country, That's you got it. Some, somebody, somebody sold you a cable package for your home. You either get basic or huh. the next level and whatever, whatever. Somebody sold something. They came in. They put the little cable box in your house. That's the product. They bill you for it. You pay you for it. If you don't pay it, guess what? 
you did they 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 ain't got to come out of your house no more. They just no. hit a button and shut the thing <laughs> off, and, you, and your services don't work till you pay your bill. Wow, you're right. Sales APAR contracts there every is. day, and when that gentleman explained that to me, it made all that makes sense, sense said, right now, there. Said, this is what I want to do. So I got trained. I trained under him, and then I got promoted to be the contract administrator for a construction division. And my guys built a water filtration plant up in Hemlock, New York, huh. for the city of Rochester. At the time, there were hundreds of thousands of in, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of invoices that had not been paid, and that wow. this started in 1990. So I know now it's been 29 years. I'm, I'll be 30, be 30 years next year. So wow. 1990 is when it started. They were building this, building this water filtration plant. The engineer said, I'm not paying y'all because he had a certain format of how the invoices were supposed to be. The previous huh. administrator didn't get it. So he, boyfriend, it was, it was his project. It was real simple. You're not doing this the way I want it. I'm not paying y'all. Wow. So he, he held up hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh. I get, to, I get, the, I'm the new contract administrator. I have to get on the phone, talk to him and say, hey, Mr. Whatever his name was, I'm D, I'm with CDM and we, I need to untangle this. And he, oh. you know, he had some few choice words yeah. I had one over here while he finished. And then I came back. I said, okay, sir, appreciate all that. Here's the thing. I'm new. I'm the new rep. I don't know what happened previously, but I do know this. You, I, if you will give me 30 days and send me a list of everything that's wrong, I will personally make sure that I fix this and resubmit it with revised. And from here forward, we won't do this again. Wow. And I'm happy to tell you, if you Google city of Rochester, Hemlock, New York, our water filtration plant is built. Oh my stands. God. And that was 1992. So oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. From somebody who was just staunch that I am not doing this. Whoa. Whoa. So it's been, it's been like that since, you know, since yeah. 19, 1990, because when I, from that project was untangling it, getting it right and then moving forward. And once I untangled it, they paid the money. Yeah. And then the, you know, cause the, the understand they were building a water filtration plant be like how the money water gets sifted and all oh that stuff goodness. for the city. So if they didn't, if they didn't get this straightened out, there was not going to be any water. So exactly. you just had to get fixed. So I learned then how to untangle problems. I dealt with sales, AP, AR contracts, the same four things I've been talking about all night. I've been doing it since 1990. So you, My next year, gosh. wow. <laughs> wow. Some form of it. And that's, and it's, it's, and I had to, and here's another, this gentleman, I never met this man. I built my relationship with him over the phone. Right. Exactly. He's, he had a list of things that were wrong and he said, I want this fixed. I said, okay. Send me how you want it. And he had, he was very particular about, about his invoices all of the backups, all the all of the receipts for everything that was what was charged. Yeah. He had a special form. <laughs> this boy, this man, oh my gosh, that's <laughs> how I learned some things. He had a particular form for the city of Rochester, New York, that had to be typed. I don't know, maybe if y'all remember <laughs> typewriter, but we used to have to type this form. This man was so particular that if you if you, you know how back in old school, if you had if you had that correction tape thing, you would oh yes. Listen, this we had a, a two <laughs> forms: a white sheet and a yellow sheet. I never forget it. He, when he lifted up the second page, if you made a correction, he, he would void it. Get it would not pay you. It had, to, it had to be absolutely perfect. No typos, no coffee stains, no grease stains, nothing. Man. I learned how to do things and in decency and in order and, yeah. and correctly from him. I, pre I never got to meet him, but he, he so impacted how I do things. Yes. And he taught me how to research. He taught me how to problem solve. He taught me how to build relationships with people over the phone. I never met this man. I talked to him on the phone, though, just like we're talking now. That's something Guess what? Else. The project is completed. Yeah. The, building, the building went live. It's still, if you Google it right now, it still stands. That was, what, 20, over 30, almost, almost 30 years ago. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Professionalism. And, and, and I, I like that. Yeah. Sometimes it's a tough lesson and, and anybody else would have been like, you know what? Forget it. Just for, no, but you know, by sticking to that, it really just made you that much more, you know, just pristine with how you run your organization and you run your firm. Thank you. But that's, that's what you do in business. Yeah. Every business, every business, I don't care what you do. 
if you expect to be successful, you can't quit at the first sign of trouble. Right. Right. All the people that we admire, from musicians to artists to athletes, you name it, don't you think all of them had some hard times mm -hmm. and ran up against some stuff? Every one of them. And guess what? They figured it out. They That's got right. back in the game and they're doing it. That's Who are the right. people we admire the most is because of their, their hard work, their discipline, their passion. That's what we're attracted to. We just yes. don't want to do work. Right. We just right. don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we want it easy. The 144 characters, if I could do everything 144 characters, what, oh. big girl? Oh, it's good. <laughs> don't nobody want to do nothing else past that. But here's the thing. Everybody that we admire, every company that we admire, everything that we use, Somebody had, to, had to, do, to design it, somebody had to think about it, somebody had to sell it, and then it's the same thing, a sale, invoice, billing, contract. Come on. I don't care what it is. Yes. Let's take, okay, I happen to like the, this is the Williams sisters, Venus and Serena. Yes. Phenomenal tennis players. Oh, right. my gosh. What, right. What do you think? Their dad, their dad sold them on building mm. a way out of Compton, California with tennis. Yes. Sold. Got the invoice, got the billing, got the contract. He trained, got them trained and trained, trained, trained. Boom. They are now wow. what? Some of the world's best the tennis best. players. They got contracts with Nike and this one and that one. Something was sold. Invoice, bill, pay, contract. It's the same it's four the things. It's the same principles. Yes. It, do you see it now? Do you see yes. it? Yes. Okay. I'm laid out perfectly. Clear. Uh, come on now that's uh, you you told it that's, that's sports, exactly it sport i mean every every person that we love in sports you pick football baseball basketball soccer yeah tennis, golf a sale an invoice billing contract tiger woods let's take him just him as an example in golf yeah so golf so golf was sold to him by his dad. Mm -hmm. he figured out how to get the billing done. They got the invoices done. They got a contract. He's playing for, he, he wear whatever his gear is, he wears. He's got a contract, whatever yeah. company. Here you go. Oh. Sales, AP, AR, contracts. Some four things. I don't care what you talk about. Some exactly. Four in life. Y everything. Yes. It, it's in everything. Because here's the thing. If you're listening to me, as you're, if you're a business owner, you sell. You sell you. You sell you. You sell your yes, product. Yes. You tell you tell people you are the best at whatever. True. So you're gonna eventually do your presentation. You're gonna make your sale. Apparently, they're gonna buy from you. Then what? You're gonna bill them for the service. They're gonna pay you for the service, and you're gonna have a contract of what you said you were gonna do. Those four things every day. That's all right. day. Oh, I love the way you tied that in. That's perfect. That's perfect. So those of you listening, not just business authors. Whatever you have, you know, you're, you are the business. You you're are the, the brand. You're the yes. product. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, you, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. Please tell the people again how they can find you, where they can hear you, because they're going to want to hear from you. You got some <laughs> stuff coming. Tell us again where we can hear from you next, where we can find you. Okay. Well, again, thank you. You can fo follow me on, um, at, on Instagram at, at Bowden D. So it's B-O-W-D-E-N-D-E-E. -E. So, so on Instagram, it's at Bowden D-E-E. -E. Uh, Facebook, um, on Facebook. And also um, BCS Solutions is also on Facebook. And then the website for BCS Solutions is www.bcsconsultinggrp.com. That's www.bcsconsultinggrp.com. And one more time, there's a free a free download. It's called Five Successful Strategies to Collecting Your Money. And that's at www.bcsconsultinggrp.com. Halfway down the page, put your name and your email, click download, and it's just a free gift that tells you the five ways to successfully collect your money according to D. Oh, come on, y'all. You have got to follow this. I'm, I'm telling you, you've got to follow her. Businesses, Go to that website and find out how to how to increase your revenue and and stop losing you know uh, losing precious <laughs> resources you know just from simple principles and 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 yeah again I'm a fan I'm a, I'm a huge huge fan and Thank so you. you know as as people watch me rise just know that 
I've got my start from BCS Solutions. I, I, I know a little something from D. Bowden. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm quite honored to have you here to, to, to you know, this was a, a great start for everyone. And so you get to be the, the platform that I, I, I developed my podcast from. You are the platform for me. Oh, thank you. So wow. thank you. Thank That's you an honor. so I appreciate much. That. Thank you. That's awesome. Yes. All right, you all. Well, we are out of here. If you have any more questions, please follow Dee Bowden on all of her social media. Go to the website and get your business back in order. That's in your life. That's in your business. That's in everything you do. Let's get your life back in order. Thank you so much again. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, let's see.